welcome to today's lecture today we will be studying about the arterial supply and venous drainage to the anterolateral abdominal wall coming to the arterial supply so here the arteries are been divided according to where they lie either they lie in the superficial level or it is lying in the deeper level so superficially we can see the branches from the musculophrenic artery superficial epigastric artery and superficial circumflex iliac artery then in the deeper level we can see the superior epigastric artery inferior epigastric artery then 10th and 11th intercostal artery subcostal artery and deep circumflex iliac artery now coming to the arteries which are present superficially the superior part of the anterolateral abdominal wall is supplied by branches from the musculophrenic artery the musculophrenic artery is a lateral terminal branch of internal thoracic artery so here you are having the internal thoracic artery which is dividing into a lateral branch called the musculophrenic artery and the medial branch called the superior epigastric artery then the inferior part of the wall is supplied medially by the superficial epigastric artery and laterally by the superficial circumflex iliac artery some authors also consider the superficial external pudendal artery which passes in front of the spermatic cord to supply the scrotum and penis in males whereas the labia majora in females so all these arteries what you are seeing that is the superficial circumflex iliac superficial epigastric artery as well as the superficial external pudendal all these are branches from the which is arising from the femoral artery so this superficial epigastric artery what you are seeing here so it runs supero medially across the inguinal ligament up to the umbilicus so here is the umbilicus this was the inguinal ligament so it is running above and medially supero medially from inguinal ligament up to the umbilicus then the superficial circumflex iliac artery what you are having here so it runs laterally below the inguinal ligament so this is the inguinal ligament it is running below and laterally towards the anterior superior iliac spine to supply the skin of the inguinal region so in this picture what you can see is this is the internal thoracic artery which is dividing a medial branch that is the superior epigastric artery then the lateral branch that is called the musculophrenic artery then this what you are seeing here is the rectus abdominis muscle so in the deeper aspect the superior part of the wall is supplied by the superior epigastric artery so it is the medial terminal branch of internal thoracic artery so this artery lies deep to the rectus abdominis muscle resting on the posterior wall of the rectus sheath so this artery anastomoses with the inferior epigastric artery at the level of umbilicus so the superior epigastric artery will anastomose with the inferior epigastric artery at the level of umbilicus now coming to the inferior epigastric artery what you seeing here so the inferior part of the wall is supplied medially by the inferior epigastric artery so it is a branch from external iliac artery so it pierces the fascia transversalis to enter the rectus sheath which later ends by anastomosing with the superior epigastric artery so the other arteries which are present in the deeper level are so branches of 10th and 11th 
intercostal arteries as well as the subcostal arteries so they are the branches from posterior intercostal arteries so they accompany the lateral cutaneous nerves then coming to the deep circumflex iliac artery what you are seeing here so this is the deep circumflex iliac artery so it is a branch from external iliac artery so it courses laterally along the inguinal ligament towards the antero superior iliac spine then some authors also consider the lumbar arteries so which are dorsal branches of abdominal aorta and they enter the abdominal wall from the side so now coming to the venous drainage of the anterolateral abdominal wall so the venous drainage it is divided into the superficial veins as well as the deep veins coming to the superficial veins so what you are having is this is the umbilicus so above the umbilicus what you can see so the vein closer to the midline so they drain into the superior epigastric vein so in this diagram you are not able to see it so the veins on the lateral side they drain into the lateral thoracic vein so this is the lateral thoracic vein which in turn drains into the axillary vein so from the axillary vein it will drain into the superior vena cava so coming below the umbilicus so you can see the vein close to the midline they drain into the inferior epigastric vein so in this diagram you cannot see it so on the lateral side they drain into the superficial epigastric there are superficial circumflex iliac superficial external pudendal vein which later drain into the great saphenous vein so that will drain into the inferior vena cava so now coming to the deep veins so in this picture what you can see so this is the rectus abdominis muscle so here you are having the superior epigastric vein this is the inferior epigastric vein so the superior epigastric vein they drain into the internal thoracic vein the inferior epigastric vein along with deep circumflex iliac vein they drain into the external iliac vein so in this picture what you can see so these are the intercostal veins this is the subcostal vein then here this is the right ascending lumbar this is the ascigus this is the hemiascigus so the lower posterior intercostal veins what you are having here so they empty into the ascigus vein in right side as well as hemiascigus vein in the left side then the right subcostal vein joins with the right ascending lumbar vein to form the ascigus vein so here the left subcostal vein is joining with the left ascending lumbar vein which drains into the, uh, drains and forms the hemiascigus vein coming to the clinical importance so first one if the portal vein is obstructed the para umbilical vein and the superficial veins around the umbilicus they become glossly distended and tortuous so from the umbilicus it appears in a radiating manner like the spokes of a wheel so this condition is called as caput medusae c a p u t m e d u s a e caput medusae so in this picture what you can see so this is the umbilicus surrounding the umbilicus the para umbilical vein and the superficial vein they are being distended and tortuous due to obstruction of portal vein because of which you can see the vein uh, how it is appearing in like in a radiating fashion it appears like the spokes of the wheel so this is called the caput medusae secondly if there is any obstruction present in the superior vena cava or inferior vena cava the thoraco epigastric vein connects the axillary vein to the saphenous vein 
So in this picture what you can see, so this is the thoracoepigastric vein what is seeing. So here you will have the axillary vein, below here you are having the great saphenous vein. So this is the thoracoepigastric vein which is connecting the axillary vein as well as the saphenous vein. So this thoracoepigastric vein is formed by the anastomosis of lateral thoracic vein which is a tributary of the axillary vein with the superficial epigastric vein which is a tributary of the great saphenous vein. So we can tell that so this is the vein which is connecting the upper limb with the lower limb. So this diagram is showing the direction of blood flow if there is obstruction of superior vena cava or inferior vena cava. If the superior vena cava is obstructed then blood is flown in the thoracoepigastric vein from above downwards. Whereas if the inferior vena cava is obstructed, the blood flows in the thoracoepigastric vein from below upwards. Thirdly, if the pubic branch of inferior epigastric artery is large, it is called as abnormal obturator artery. So this is also told by surgeons as the artery of death. This is due to if the artery gets damaged when the lacunar ligament is cut during surgery for the strangulated femoral hernia, it can lead to life-threatening hemorrhage. Thank you for watching.